Zawaite o Wadentes. My name is Draco, and this is Antigua Culina, the show where I recreate ancient recipes and discuss their ingredients and history. As usual, sources are in the description. But first, a libatum de Vesta. Today, we have a chicken recipe, Pullum Oxyzomum, a Greek recipe, no doubt based on that imported word. Personally, I think Pullum Acerbum, sour chicken, has a better ring to it, but never underestimate knowing exactly where your food comes from, Greek or not. Roman sour chicken is a fried than baked chicken recipe, more likely used for chicken pieces than a whole bird. With ingredients like parsley, vinegar, and a tambernas worth of pepper, I'm sure it'll be delicious. Here's the recipe as appears in the De Re Cognaria, with translation provided. As usual, I provide my personal translation compared to the veiling translation seen on the Penelope U Chicago website. It's a fairly simple chicken recipe. Fry the chicken pieces to develop a brown crust, then glaze it with the sauce and bake until fully cooked. Twice the recipe calls for a scruple, which is a unit of Roman measurement, about a gram or so in mass. More on that later. For this recipe, you'll need one to one and a half pounds of chicken, any cut you prefer. I'm using thighs. Three fourths cup of olive or vegetable oil. One to two cups of stock or broth. 2 tablespoons of pseudogarum, 1 tablespoon of red wine vinegar, 7 grams of peppercorns, some sprigs of parsley, and 2 to 3 leeks, depending on their size. To start, mix your pseudogarum, pepper, and vinegar in a mortar and pestle or food processor. Add then the chopped or torn parsley leaves and stir until incorporated. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, wash your leeks and cut them into pieces to your liking. Next, lining the bottom of an oiled baking dish with them. Then, set it aside as you bring your oil to about 375 degrees Fahrenheit in a large cooking vessel suitable for shallow frying. You'll know it's up to temperature when the oil shimmers or a crumb of bread fries vigorously when added. Cut the chicken to large pieces and then using tongs or another tool, lower the chicken pieces in. Expect danger like your sleep-deprived watchman on the banks of the Trebia hearing the cry of an elephant pierce through the night air. Allow the chicken to fry well, flipping every 30 seconds or so, or until browned well on all sides. Next, take it out and put it onto the bed of your leeks, then brush it with your pepper, vinegar, parsley mixture. Bake for an additional 30 to 40 minutes or until the chicken and leeks are cooked through. While it's baking, let me tell you about Roman units of measurement. As you might expect, they were standardized, but only generally in the sense that they were derived from common quantities or knowledges, such as the mass of grain or water, much like the imperial system that we use today is ultimately based off of uh, parts of the human body. To give a Roman example, the Roman mile is 1,000 paces of the average person, or about 1,000 times 1.48 meters, so rather easy to calculate for marching armies. Each pace was itself 5 feet, and each foot just under 30 centimeters. For area, especially land area, the standard area of measurement was a eugerum, plural eugera, around 170 Roman feet squared, or 2523 meters squared. When allotting land for veterans or redistribution, the cause of which the rabble-rousing brothers Gracchi met their end in the late 2nd century BCE, the unit was also the eugera. Tiberius Gracchus the Younger, the shame of his father's legacy, ordered that each citizen only hold 500 eugera of Agripublicus, and for that he was killed among other things. For volume measurements, the standard was the sextarius, just under 550 milliliters, with the modius, the standard unit of grain transportation, equal to two and two-thirds that amount. While some accounts differ, the grain trade, including the dole, is believed to have carried 60 million modii of raw wheat to Rome every year for baking needs. After all, a city full of plebs needs to stay fed, lest they get uppity. Time for a taste. This has to be one of the best chicken recipes I've had in a very long time. The vinegar just absolutely cuts through the entire dish, and it's wonderful. It's balanced well by the flavor of the leeks as well, as well as the sharp pepper flavor that permeates the entire dish. The thighs are perfectly cooked. Well, truly, I scarcely know a way of overcooking chicken thighs. In conclusion, make this recipe again, try other ingredients, use more vinegar. Also, I need a better microphone, more footage also, and to the Cone Fellowship for giving me the money to make these videos, many thanks.